Hello. Today uh, we'll be looking at another uh, ordinary differential equation, uh, and we would be solving that using ODE forty five. The function that uh, the uh, differential equation that we'll be looking at corresponds to a system of a spring mass damper. So you can find this system in many places. Basically, it looks the schematic looks like this. You have a mass and you have a spring and you have a damper right and this side is fixed so the places where you can find such systems are for example uh, these uh, suspension in your car wheels or bike wheels uh, you would have seen certain doors which close automatically right when when you let go they close slowly uh, so those systems are also employ some some type some type of this spring mass damper so let us first uh, derive the differential equation and then we'll solve that uh, using our ODE 45 function. So let me draw a free body diagram of this. So this is the mass. Uh, I forgot to draw, I forgot to show you that there is also a force attached on this side. Right, and again the coordinate system is y in the given direction. Right, so let us draw the free body di diagram okay so let uh, imagine that this mass moves in this direction if it if it moves in that direction then the inertia acting on the mass would be in the opposite direction and inertia is mass times acceleration so it's m d square y by dt square that's the inertia force what other force do we have okay so this spring has a spring constant k and this damper has a damping coefficient of c so because of the spring constant if i pull the mass upwards the spring would try to pull it downwards so the force exerted by the spring is the spring uh, constant times the displacement so that's k times y and the force exerted by the damper is the uh, damping coefficient c times the velocity and the velocity is dy by dt all right and if there is a force acting on this mass which is trying to pull it up then that force is denoted by this right and now let us equate all these uh, forces so the sum of all the forces in equilibrium should be zero so let us add these first force is the inertia force md square y by dt square uh, c dy by dt because it is also in the same direction so we are adding it ky is also in this direction but f is in the is in the opposite direction so minus f equals zero so this is our second order ordinary differential equation which we need to solve again the solution of this system of equation uh, solution of this single equation would be difficult by our uh, traditional analytical methods and in engineering we are usually interested in finding values of display displacements at discrete points of time so it is not necessary to get the complete solution it would be enough if, if we could solve this numerically so remember like last time we need a, a first order ordinary differential equations to solve them using the ODE 45 function so like last time we need to convert this to two first order ordinary differential equations so like last time again we can imagine or we can uh, assume y or we can call y to be y1 and we can call dy1 by dt to be y2 so making these substitutions in this above equation i can write m so dy by dt d square y by dt square is equal to dy2 by dt plus c dy by dt is c y2 plus k y is k y1 equals f remember f is also a function of t f will be changing with respect to time it can be constant also but let us write a generalized equation right um, so let me write this let me write the two equations now the two ordinary differential equations first order the first one was dy1 equals dt is y2 and the second one is from the dy2 by dt equals 1 by m 
times f of t minus c y two minus k y one. So these are the two first order ordinary differential equation that we need to solve using octave and specifically the function ODE forty five. Let's start coding. So I'm going to call the file uh, spring mass damper. So let let me call it spring mass damper system. Dot m. Right. So. Okay. So in order to uh, start the computations, we would first need to define the variables. The variables we have, or the constants that we have in this problem, is the mass. So let me take a value of one for mass k spring coefficient. Let that also be equal to one. C equals one. Okay. Then I need to define a forcing function, right? Because if you if you see here, this has f of t on the f of t on the uh, right hand side. So it's a forcing function. So we need to define that. It can be anything. For example, right now let it be equal to zero. Let it let that be equal to zero for now. So let us say there is no force acting on the system. Okay. We can change it later. Okay. Uh, and again, let's write down the ODE forty five function. Remember what it it takes three things, right? ODE it takes a function of the uh, differential equations. It takes t range. That is the time range in which we want solutions, and it takes the initial values, initial conditions, and it stores them in two matrices T and Y. Okay, so now we need to define these three things, right? So first we define ODE fun, and remember last time how we did this. So there will be two equations. These are the two equations that we need to write. The first one is Y of two, second is Y divided by m times uh, f of t, small t, f of t minus c times y of two minus k times y of one. So we have the O D uh, function. Then we need to define the t time range. Uh, remember, we, what we usually do is uh, we give the starting value and the ending value. For example, zero to fifty. But there is another way. If you want solutions to be output, uh, to be given out by the equation at your required intervals, then you can define those intervals. So this time I'll be defining the time range as such. What it means is the time goes from zero to fifty in intervals of zero point one. Okay. Let me define the initial conditions. So remember, uh, y one corresponds to the displacement and y two corresponds to the velocity. So let me write the initial conditions for those. So y is zero is the initial condition for displacement. Let that be, for example, let that be uh, one, and the initial condition for velocity. Let that also be equal to one. So our initial condition <coughs> met, uh, ve vector is y zero, v zero. Okay. So I think it's, this is enough. Right. So let me save this. Open up Octave. Let me. Set the okay. So I want the graphs to be clear. So I'm setting the default line width of the plots to be three. Uh, don't worry about that. That's something you can look at later. Okay. So let me now run the uh, spring mass damper system. Okay. So I think it <coughs> the function has uh, must have outputted two values. First is time, and the second one would be y. Since there are two equations, it outputs two values. The first column corresponds to the displacement, and the second corresponds to the velocity. So let's look at the displacement. So as you can see, uh, because initially we had specified some displacement and some velocity, so the system, the system initially it oscillates and then it settles down to zero because there is no forcing function, right? So eventually things will stop and. The displacement will become zero because there is no force given to the system. There was some initial initial uh, displacement and initial velocity given to the system that caused the system to oscillate for some time, but the damping forced the system's displacement 
to go to zero. Okay. Similarly, we can look at the velocity also. Okay. So again, the velocity also goes to zero because there is no force given to the system. Let let us uh, you know add. Let us see what happens if we give some force to the system. Okay. So how do we apply a force? For example, uh, you can apply any type of force. If you think about if you think about the forces that are usually applied to such systems for example if this spring mass and damper system were to be in the wheel of a car then when the car goes over a bump the force that is applied to the car is usually a short duration force right so for example the force will have some value for example it will have a value of 1 for some time and then it will go to 0 if this axis corresponds to t and this corresponds to force so for example the force has a value of 1 for a time, uh, let us say for a time till 5 seconds and then it goes to 0. So how do we apply this kind of force? So we need to write a function. So the function can be written as such, right? f of t is equal to, is equal to 1 if uh, t is, uh, t is less than 0. Uh, wait, I can write this as it is equal to 1 if t is greater than or equal to 0 less than or equal to 5 and it is 0 for every other value right for all other values of t or a simple way to write would be for t greater than 5 so we need to define this type of function a forcing function in octave let us see how we can do that it's quite simple actually so what you need to do is uh, write down this same condition. So see, this f is a function of t. So we can write this condition. We can write t greater equal to zero, and this is a boolean and t less than equal to five. So this will return a value. Of this this ter these terms within the bracket they will return a value of one only when both of these are satisfied t greater or equal to 0 and t less than or equal to 5 only then it will return a value of 1 for everything else it will return a value of 0 so i just need to multiply my force amplitude to this so for example if i have chosen 1 then i have just multiplied 1 to this right so for example what would uh, okay let me show you let's so because i've run the code the function would have been stored uh, okay, I think I did not run it yet. Yeah. Now this is the function that we wrote, right? Now what do you think f of two would be? It will be one because it lies between zero and five, and f of six that will be zero, right? Because it is greater than. It doesn't satisfy uh, these criteria, so this thing within the parenthesis it returns zero, and zero times one is zero. Okay. So now that we have understood how we can specify a forcing function, let's. Uh, yeah, let's run this and let's plot the values. Let's plot the uh, displacement first. See how that looks. Okay, so because there is a forcing function, right? Because there is a forcing function, this there is a. I mean, the oscillations are not that uniform because uh, an additional force is being applied apart from the initial conditions of velocity and displacement okay so let, let us uh, you know, we can do another thing you can play with this let me take the value of let me take the value of the uh, damping from the user so we can see what how different values of damping affect our solution so let us run this again uh, so let us choose a damping value of sorry let's choose the damping value of 0.5 and uh, let us plot so as you can see a value of damping of 0.5 which is small because of that the system damps at a much later time right it takes much more time than it did in the last uh, in the last uh, run of the program let us run it again using even smaller value of damping and check so see the system doesn't damp uh, even after 50 seconds there is still some oscillation 
we can do another thing we can look at uh, there are multiple things that we can do so let me go to this and let me uh, let me choose initial conditions to be zero and let there only be force applied to the system right and let us now plot so as you can see this again changes so you have a system tending tending towards uh, the system is getting damped with respect to time but since the damping value is small it takes a lot of time for this to get damped if you if you put the damping value to be much larger for example uh, 1.5 maybe and then if you see then you can see that the system damps quite quickly okay we can also increase the value of force you can let this be 5 for example and see how that effect for example if we if the force is not the force is not a impulse force or a step force as given in the figure if if it is a constant force that is always applied to the system let us see what happens then so uh, let me write this as so for our case this forcing function will always give a value of 5 for the entire time range that we have defined the time range that we are interested in is 0 to 50 and i have defined the force to be equal to 5 from 0 to 100 let's see what that does to the system with the value of 0.5 let's see the response so as you can see uh, there is damping but the system does not settle at zero value of displacement after the system has damped it in fact settles at a value of at a value which is non-zero right because the forcing is the forcing function is always present in the entire time range so that does not let the system settle down to zero displacement it settles to some value of i think about five right so i guess this should be enough for a system consisting of a string mass and damper uh, and to which a forcing function is applied and i guess you'll be able to solve problems uh, using this ODE, ode 45 function and octave which deal with string mass damper systems so thank you for watching and I'll probably upload another application of uh, the ODE45 in the next video. And you can always look at the code which I'll upload in my GitHub profile, the link to which is found in the description of this video. Right, okay, thank you.